All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday, March 30th, and we got a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video, like we always do. When I go through each and every one of these games, I'll give you my lean on the side. We'll talk about the total and give you any player props that I'm liking in the game as well. But as always, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video. That is where I'll list out all of my final plays. If you do want to do the opposite and fade me, all those plays will be listed in the pinned comment. Last night... <laughs> Not a very fadeable night. We have six plays. We cash six of them. We had Jeff McNeil under 0.5 strikeouts. Matt Olson over 0.5 bases. Ray's money line. Mariner's money line. Um, we had a parlay of D-backs and the Dodgers money line. And then we had Carlos Rodon over four and a half hits allowed. He ended with five hits allowed. Ladies and gentlemen, our first official sweep. We did sweep that Dodgers-Padres series, but our first official sweep of the MLB season. Let's go, money gun. Let's go. I hate having to clean that up afterwards. Very big pain, but we can celebrate it while we can, right? So maybe we can try and run it back on today's slate. We do have the daily dinger to talk about as well. Cashing it. We had a bunch of people say Christian Walker, FYI, but uh, that's going to be kind of like the fun of the lottery of the daily dinger. Um, we're picking Lushington today. He called Christian Walker for a home run. Christian Walker gets the job done. If you don't know what the Daily Dinger is, we literally started it yesterday. All you have to do is comment with the hashtag Daily Dinger and give me a player you think is going to hit a home run today. And then tomorrow when I do the video, I'll find someone that did hit a home run and someone that did call it correct. And you get a shout out at random. So go ahead and drop those hashtag Daily Dingers in the comments. I think we're liking it so far. Let me know your thoughts on that, uh, that you know, community engagement thing too because obviously we have the ride of the day which we love doing but i want to involve you guys more and more so hopefully the daily dinger is partially like that but uh guys we can go ahead and jump into today's games again we got a full mlb slate i still encourage you to kind of take it easy as we get into the season says the guy that had six plays that swept last night i get it but even still some of those were half unit plays quarter unit plays like we haven't even put down uh, a full unit play yet um in the mlb so make sure you guys do kind of you know you're a little conservative to start the year because we're still waiting for a lot of data to come in but hit that subscribe button hit that like button let's jump in we have game number one here the new york mets taking on the Brewers. Brewers on the mound for the Brewers. We got D.L. Hall going up against Luis Severino. Um, I think I just have to trust uh, the experience here. And, and Severino, though, uh, on a, a different team here, I don't hate the spot for the Mets coming off of a loss yesterday. Uh, these are two teams that we kind of clearly saw uh, can be pretty evenly matched. Even though it was a 3-1 victory for Milwaukee, uh, you know, there are plenty of times when I thought the Mets, you know, they had a few guys on, then, you know, they got out of it with a double play or something like that. Like, I thought that this was a, uh, a game that could kind of come down to the wire and you can make the argument 3-1 is down to the wire, but Milwaukee uh, definitely kind of took that one home. Um, so I think that they split it up today. I think the Mets take this win, trusting the arm of Severino. In terms of um, uh, what I think of a total, uh, I could see something similar to yesterday, a low-ish scoring game. Now, uh, I would kind of peg this one at 7, so it is a little bit too uh, close for comfort for me to actually pull the trigger myself, but I'll lean towards the under. And then from a player prop perspective, uh, we're going to run it right back. We're going to look at Jeff McNeil. So let's jump into Outlier so I can show you. We're going to look at Jeff McNeil again, under .5 strikeouts. Uh, same sort of situation going up against Hall, uh, who is a left-handed pitcher. We have Jeff McNeil, his average and K percentage um, are way better when he's facing a left-handed pitcher. Uh, you know, when it comes to his K percentage, uh, you know, K Hall's K percentage, it cuts in half when he goes up against left-handed batter, and he throws 54% fastball, right? We looked at it yesterday. This is a Jeff McNeil that likes to make contact and hit fastballs, uh, especially coming from a left-hand pitcher. So uh, maybe this is the new thing. Maybe it's the pick that will ride. Uh, you know, if this cashes, this is going to be like a thing because we'll take it every day. But Jeff McNeil, under .5 strikeouts again. Are we getting a little bit too greedy doing the same play? Probably, but we'll take that one for now. By the way, guys, that screen that I was just sharing, that is Outlier, my favorite player prop research tool on the market. We'll probably pop it up a few other times during today's show, but if you do want to check it out, I have a link in the pinned comment. You'll get seven days free. It's an absolute no-brainer. If you don't like it, fine, you won't go and pay for it. But even if you do like it, which I'm pretty confident you will, it's only $20, actually $19.99 per month after that. One of the best priced tools out there. Like There's similar sites charging hundreds of dollars for all of this data, and they even do it in a better visual way, I think. So go check it out guys again that link will be in the pinned comment but let's move on to game number two here next up we have the white Sox hosting the tigers in this one um last time these two teams played uh was just a couple days ago and the tigers won one nothing uh we lean towards chicago in that game because like i tell you guys or have told you guys for the past couple days baseball is a big time plus money betting 
sport. Like you can take shots on underdogs and whatnot, but I don't think the value is there in the White Sox today. Um, so I'm going to lean towards Detroit in this spot. In terms of odds that we're getting, uh, you know, I don't really necessarily hate them at minus 130 on the money line. Um, so I would probably lean towards Detroit on the money line there. And I'm going to lean towards the under as well, because again, we didn't really see prolific offense um, in game number one of this series. Uh, so I don't necessarily see much happening today when it comes to um, <clears throat> Excuse me, when it comes to uh, looking at player props in this spot, nothing major uh, jumps out at me uh, uh, in this game. So keep an eye on the pin comments, see if we add anything, but not seeing much as of right now. Next up, we're looking at Baltimore taking on the Angels. On the mound for the Angels is going to be Griffin Canning. On the mound for the O is going to be Grayson Rodriguez. I don't necessarily think that this is going to come down to a pitcher's duel here. Uh, neither one of these pitchers really, uh, I would say, kind of closed out the year on a super, super high. No, not, not going to say that they closed out the year on a terrible note. I mean, Griffin Canning 0-5 his last five starts, but he's on the Angels, who were even injured at that time too, right? So, I'm not going to blame him too, too much for it, but I don't think that this is going to be like a pitching showdown. Uh, so, I'm going to lean towards the over, even though it is uh, one of the higher ones here at 8.5 uh, when these two teams just last played. Baltimore dropped 11 runs on their head, but the Angels actually kind of did their job too in a weird way. Three runs, like that's almost half of what we need for this total, right? So, if they just do something similar to that and Baltimore can even come back down to earth a little bit, they'll probably win the game in the over will hit. So yeah, I'm on Baltimore side of things as well as taking a peek at the over. And though I like Baltimore, I also like taking a peek at Grayson Rodriguez over four and a half hits allowed for plus 110 odds. Uh, this is dating back to last year, an Angels team that, you know, hits Grayson Rodriguez fairly well. Um, <clears throat> not necessarily a team that hits righties all that well altogether. But Grayson Rodriguez, many of these guys have a good average against him. Last two appearances against the Angels, nine hits and seven hits. His last six appearances uh, were over, you know, five plus hit games. So I just don't think that he's necessarily going to um, mix it up all that much. You know, he's a fastball changeup guy. Uh, I think the Angels should be able to at least get off five hits on him. Um, and again, that kind of correlates to me taking a peek at the over as well, right? Next up, we got the Phillies taking on the Braves. I wish we made this one a final play yesterday because we liked Atlanta. Um, didn't end up pulling the trigger on them, but they win 9-3 to on the back of Spencer Strider going up against Zach Wheeler. Today, we have a little bit different. We have Max Fried going up against Aaron Nola. Um, I still do think that I would lean towards Max Fried um, in the pitching edge here, but I think Philly comes to play, so I'm, I'm going to maybe look at Philly on the run line in this spot. I think it's going to be a close game, so maybe Philly plus 1.5, but if I had a gun to my head and had to pick money line... I think I'd still lean towards Atlanta, even though I do think that these are two NL kind of, you know, Goliaths in a sense fighting. Um, in terms of a total sitting at eight runs, I think a lot of people are going to be all over the overtake just simply because of what we saw yesterday, a 9-3 game. This one probably comes back down to earth a little bit. We could still have, you know, a 4-3 type of a game. Um, <laughs> if the, the uh, Atlanta could win 4-3, meaning we'd cash Atlanta money line and our lean of Phillies plus one and a half. And I do kind of like the under as these uh, teams come back down to earth a little little bit today here so I uh, yeah, give me the under in this spot as well from my player prop perspective I don't hate the idea of Aaron Nola under one and a half walks my concern is that uh, it's his first start of the year is he going to be a little jittery is there going to be some growing pains uh, that type of a thing so uh, yeah it's a lean as of right now um, but it could be a final play because I do think uh, you know Given his pitch profile, he's not a very, I think his uh, walk percentage is like under six percent or was last year so pretty damn good Next up, we have Oakland taking on Cleveland. This one is is just weird to me because we still have people talking about the A's in the comments being like, no, you're not giving them enough credit, blah, blah. Like, okay, they lose opening day 8 nothing. They lose yesterday 6-4. to four. Today, you still have a little bit of value looking at the Guardians at minus 130 on DraftKings. So uh, I'm, I'm going to keep leaning towards a better team. I think they have the pitching advantage today as well um, as Tanner Beebe sets to take the mound for Cleveland going up against J.P. Sears. Uh, J.P. Sears hasn't looked all that tremendous against um Cleveland, uh, you know, last year either. So I think that that could be a good spot. Um, so give me Cleveland I, again. Like I think as the season progresses, it's going to be hard to take money line uh, of teams against Oakland. So kind of doing it while we can here. We're just yet to make it a final play um, in terms of the total seven and a half runs. Uh, give me the over in this spot. Yesterday seemed like it'd be a little bit more of a consistent type of a game than the game number one where both teams did contribute six, four, right? Um, but game number one in this series was an eight, nothing game. Like still, I guess hit the over, but Cleveland did all of the work. I do think that um, the A's have a little bit of juice to be able to put up at least, you know, a couple runs 
here uh, making this possible. So uh, I lean towards the over as well. When we head over to uh, player props here, I'm going to look at JP Sears over one and a half walks allowed. If I share my screen on outlier, you can see he's done it in nine straight games here. Um, the one concern is that we need him to be erratic with the fastball, right? He throws that plenty. Cleveland's not a team that's going to go out there and walk a lot. They'll walk more than they strike. You can see the green number. That's the only thing that kind of helps us here, but their base on ball percentage um, isn't all that great in terms of taking an over. So we need him to be the one that's a little wild, not necessarily trusting that Cleveland is the team that has the, you know, the, the good eye and stuff like that. But definitely, definitely in his realm to go out there and walk two guys through, you know, five, six innings. Next up, we're looking at Kansas City taking on Minnesota. <clears throat> Excuse me. This was a 4-1 uh, to one win for Minnesota in game number one of the series on opening day. Today on the mound for them is going to be Joe Ryan going up against Seth Lugo. Seth Lugo did close out the year strong last year. Um, what I will say with the uh, Dodgers, but what I will say is... Uh, I do think that the this is a strong pitching advantage over to the Minnesota side of things. Uh, Joe Ryan, <clears throat> my opinion, has the edge here. Even if you look at recent stats, um, you know, close out closing out the year may not give that indication. Uh, but this is obviously a team that I kind of ragged on day number one. And similar to the A's, people are like, no, you're not giving the Royals much credit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that may be the case, but uh, I also don't think that, you know, minus 130 is truly uh, a fair odds in a sense for Minnesota. Like, I think that they, in the opposite direction, like I think that they could easily be minus 140 favorites in this and still get some of the action. So I'm going to lean towards Minnesota because I think that it's the valuable side of the bet here. If this was plus 140, something like that for the Kansas City money line, then maybe we're talking some chance of me taking a flyer on it, but at plus 110 um, for the team that I do think is the clear-cut worst team, I just can't necessarily get behind there. And in terms of the total, we're sitting at eight and a half right now. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, uh, much like the first game was, four to one. Even if this is a four to three, a game that's a little bit closer, right? Um, we can even have a five to three game for for uh, all I care. Like I do think that this game stays under that eight and a half mark. When a, from a player prop perspective, uh, we'll jump into outlier here. I kind of like Nelson Velasquez here. Over 0.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Um, that means he can walk, get on base, run, and all that stuff, and it would still count. Or he could have an RBI where he hits it to center field. The guy on third tags. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is a uh, uh, 0.5 to do any of those stats. I do like the spot for. You scroll down here, you can see he's a 235 hitter. This is last year's data. But going up against a righty today, he bats 257. And Joe Ryan against righties. Batting average actually jumps over. Over 20 points, right? Hits per nine jumps up. ERA jumps up. And this is a fastball uh, pitcher. F uh, 56, 57% really of his fastballs are going to be, th of his pitches are going to be fastballs here. And Velasquez, if he leaves anything in the middle, Velasquez should be able to hit it. So I do think that this could be a nice little play for over 0.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Next up, Miami, who has dropped two straight here against Pittsburgh. They are the favorite yet again on the mound uh, is Weathers for Miami going up against Jared Jones. I don't know if that is confirmed yet, uh, but that is what we have at our disposal right now. Uh, again, Pittsburgh has taken the first two games here. They win... Um, Game number one, six to five, and then they win game number two yesterday, seven to two. This is a four game series, as most of these. Uh, so they do have another chance at them here, but uh, this is this is tough because I'd like to look at Miami and say, yeah, I think they're going to win this game. But based on what I've seen from Pittsburgh now offensively, they've looked good, and their bullpen has been really good. You know, striking guys out left and right. Uh, so I think I lean towards Pittsburgh. I don't know if I make it a final play because it seems like you're kind of late to the party, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, okay, no kidding, Miami could win this game. They've seen the same team two times you know what I mean so uh, I could see Miami winning I'm not going to try and convince anyone uh, that they wouldn't but I am going to lean towards Pittsburgh today because I have been impressed um, by the bullpen to be completely honest like their whip right now I mean it's, it's through one game right um, two games it's 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 a 0.5 whip something like that um, striking out guys plenty so I do think that this could be a good spot uh, for the bullpen to kind of shine now uh, in terms of player props nothing major jumping out off the page to me in this one but I do I do not mind taking a peek at the over like I said Pittsburgh's offense has been kind of rocking in uh, Miami game number one their offense got going game number two I guess it wasn't as as great um, obviously but still you know they had scored nine runs in that game with little help from Miami hopefully they can help out a little bit today Cincinnati taking on Washington. Cincinnati, pretty big favorites here at minus 160. The total at 9.5 as of right now as well. On the mound for Cincinnati is going to be Hunter Green taking on um, Patrick Corbin, who did not close out last year all that great. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of high on Washington and that they would have a decent year. They still may, but I do think that this is a Cincinnati game, and obviously the books are reacting accordingly with these odds. Uh, right now, your best bet is actually minus 160 over on BetMGM, um, but again, it's kind of mid-160s. 
60s to 170s on most books here. In terms of the total, it is... It is up there, right, um, at nine and a half runs. But, um, you know, when these two teams in, in opening day here, uh, Cincinnati scored eight runs. They won eight to two, so it did get to ten. But um, we didn't really see much help from the Washington side of things. Uh, so that makes it a little bit worrisome. But I still do think that Cincinnati is going to be able to get theirs. Uh, and hopefully going up against Hunter Green, who has had some bad spots in his career, maybe Washington could can put up more than two here. So I'll lean towards Cincinnati as well as the over in this spot. Uh, from a player prop perspective, just because he's been cashing, I don't mind taking a peek at Kiebert Ruiz uh, over 0.5 hits, maybe just for his singles at plus 115. But I don't think any major player props have true, true uh, value, especially any plus money value here in this game. But that can always change throughout the day. Keep an eye on the pinned comments. Rays taking on the Jays. Uh, good series so far. We got our vengeance uh, with Tampa Bay last night. They come through and get the win. On the mound for them today is going to be Zach Littell going up against uh, Yusei Kikichi. I do think Kikichi is going to be the, the better pitcher in this spot. Um, so pitching advantage, in my opinion, to Toronto here. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, Toronto's uh, batting, I still feel pretty strongly that their top of the order is good, but then they do have some holes there. Uh, so I do think offensively, I would trust Tampa Bay to the littlest degree. This is kind of a toss-up for me here, but uh, I'm going to trust the team that I do think uh, is is the better team overall. And I hope the bullpen doesn't go and blow it because their bullpen hasn't been all that great as of late. Um, but I'm going to look at Tampa Bay here on the money line. Yes, I've taken them three straight times against Toronto. And this is such the type of series uh, that these two teams literally would just like, you know, four games through and they'll just split two, two. So we shall see in terms of a total eight and a half. Um, give me the under in this spot. I do think at some point uh, we're going to have. So, so far, both these teams have won the games eight to two. So I think at some point we're going to have like one of those four to two or um, even like a five, three game where both teams are contributing. It's not a blowout on either side. Right. Um, but it's a little bit less scoring um, that we've seen. So right now we've seen these guys on, you know, playing T-ball, depending on which team you're on. I do think we have a little bit more of a baseball game today. From a player prop perspective here, um, we haven't do like dove into this game all that much um, so far. From a player prop perspective, the only thing that I've dug up so far is taking a peek at Jose Siri over 0.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. Um, he's done that in eight of his last 10 games here. He does he does face a left-handed pitcher today um, in which, you know, Kikichi's facing right-handed batters. His at batting average allowed jumps up about 15 points, so I do think it's a good spot. Um, and Suri has, I think, a home run off of Kikichi in his career if we have that note correct here. So, yeah, could be something, um, but again, nothing major. In fact, you know, the, the time that we get up to these videos, not all player props are even available. Uh, so it is just kind of what it is right now. But guys, if you made it this far to the video, go ahead and comment 18. We did that yesterday. Brought us some damn luck. A six and oh, sweet. Bringing up the money gun. So if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment uh, 18 in the comments. Let's move on to the next game. All right, we got Texas taking on Chicago. Texas favored in this one. Makes sense. Um, they win night number one, four to three. But I don't love the pitcher here for Texas Day. Uh, starting for them is going to be Cody Bradford. Um, to close out the year last year, one in four record. Uh, the team was one in four. He had a 3.4 ERA, six earned runs through three and four innings in both of his last two starts here. Um, so I really just don't like the spot for him. In terms of uh, who's pitching for the Cubs, Kyle Hendricks. Can be a hit or miss guy. We know that. Um, but I do like the spot for him. He had a really good outing last time he played Texas, which uh, was way back. So, I mean, nothing that we really want to put our uh, hard-earned money on. But I do think that this could be a spot for Chicago to have some plus money value. Do I wish it was more than plus 105? Yes. But that is a side that I would lean on to take the underdog in this spot more than um more than taking the laying the the juice as the uh, as the Texas Rangers here. In terms of a total, I'm going to lean towards the over in this one. Um, I don't think either one of these pitchers are all that exceptional, and I do think you know a four three game against the two teams aces uh, night one kind of bodes well for looking at um, you know a, a decent offensive game from both sides uh, today. You can also get that for plus money. So talk about identifying plus money value uh, nine and a half over that on MGM is plus one hundred as of right now. So uh, definitely not something to to tip our nose at. I do think that that could be uh, a good spot for some good odds as well. Now, from a player prop perspective, um, you know, he had a really good opening day. Uh, I think we go back to him here. It's going to be uh, Araldis, uh, Adalis, excuse me, Garcia over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. Uh, he bats really well against righties, going up against Hendricks, who struggles to pitch against righties. Uh, he throws a changeup in which uh, isn't Garcia's favorite pitch, but uh, what I do like here, we could use the heat map over in Outlier. So this is where to write 
right-handed batters. Kyle Hendricks loves to throw that changeup, right? 25%. That's not all that great on Garcia, right? But if he hangs that changeup in this area, it looks like that's a hot spot for the changeup coming in, um, you know, I guess especially. So if he hangs that changeup lower in the zone, I do think that that could be a nice hit opportunity for Garcia. So that's a cool thing about outliers that you can kind of like game script something or, or picture something like that because the pitcher obviously is going to want to put it on that spot each and every time. But curveballs, changeups, any of these off-speed things, like sometimes you put them a little higher in the zone, which is what we're hoping for here for him to be able to tee off on. So it could be a good look there. Um, kind of a juiced play, so maybe we don't pull trigger, but I've seen this actually at two on some sports books. It's literally bumped up and down from one and a half to two, so pretty interesting. So this is tough because I keep thinking that Houston is the better team, but they didn't show it yesterday, right? Um, they even kind of got to Radon and they lose 7-1. to one. So they're 0-2 on the season here. On the mound for them today is going to be Hunter Brown, who I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, going up against Marcus Stroman, who, yeah, is going to be on a new team here, but he seems like a Yankee. So I'm going to trust him in his debut here for the Yankees. Uh, I hate leaning the Yankees as a Red Sox fan, but obviously the Red Sox, fans, Red Sox aren't really even like a real baseball team right now because I feel like they stink. So... Give me the Yankees. Uh, it's all good. In terms of a total here, nine and a half. Um, I can see this one being a low-scoring game. I do think that uh, we've seen kind of a... a Offensive night from the Yankees, two nights in a row. They probably come back down to earth. I have this game pegged at like four to two, four to three, something like that, which is well under nine and a half. Um, not necessarily backing the pitching, which I don't mind Stroman. Um, and like I said, I'm kind of hit or miss with Brown. Um, I'm more or less saying that these offenses, you know, Houston's probably going to come up from what they did yesterday a little bit, but somewhere in between what they did opening day and, um, you know, yesterday so that'll be like a two to three run game for them and then the Yankees I do think drop back down to earth and they score you know three or four so maybe I have this completely wrong I know they're good offenses but I'm taking the under in this spot um, and due to the fact that I'm taking the under uh, a lot of these guys I know it's going to sound crazy but a lot of these guys are like over type players you know big hit extra basic guys so kind of stayed away from uh, player props in this spot all right, San Diego taking on San Francisco, Battle of the Sands. Uh, Hicks on the mound for San Francisco. Um, he may be used as just like an opener. We shall see. Um, and then Dylan Cease on the mound for San Diego, uh, a pitcher that, you know, uh, I'd like to see go there and go to a better team because I was a big Cease guy last year. And not him, but the White Sox lost me plenty of money because I was willing to trust them when he was pitching. And he did pitch well, closed out the year well, too. But um, it was a tough, uh, tough team to be on. In fact, it's kind of funny. His last start that he had was against his new team, the Padres. Um, and he pitched five innings, one earned run with 7K. So I like him, and I like their spot today at minus 130 uh, at home here. In fact, we're updated odds. Yeah, minus 130 is still the best you can get. So give me Cease and the Padres in this spot. In terms of a total sitting at 7.5 right now, uh, I like the over. I think that both these teams can put up, you know, maybe a floor of, say, three runs, um, which is kind of what we we've seen so far and I do think that this is going to be a game that you know uh, the Padres kind of pull away in so I think like a five to three type spot at bare minimum today in this game so give me the over as well uh, when it comes to player props here I know I just told you I'm kind of a sucker for uh, Dylan Cease and I think this could be a good spot. Uh, this is a, a San Francisco team that strikes out a decent amount last year, the eighth most strikeouts when it comes to um, facing off a right-handed batter. And Dylan Cease, obviously a decent K per nine guy uh, in the 90th percentile there. Uh, so give me him on the strikeouts here. Over six and a half. Yeah, it's a high number, but you know what? Like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for punishment, I guess, when it comes to belly, betting that mustache of Dylan Cease. So I'll take his over in strikeouts. All right, we got the Diamondbacks taking on Colorado. This is going to be probably similar to what we did yesterday. We actually, because we locked it in early enough, had a plus money parlay for uh, Arizona and Colorado. Excuse me, Arizona and the Diamond. Uh, Arizona and the Diamondbacks. Arizona and the Dodgers. Um, right now, you can definitely get plus money. I think. Um, let's see, plus one thirty-two for that same parlay over on Fanduel. Is it us getting a little bit greedy? Maybe. Maybe we don't pull the trigger on that just yet. But uh, so far, these two teams are so, you know, I'm, and I'm speaking to them as like a whole because uh, both these two teams are just so much juiced uh, over their opponents. But their opponents are too bad for me to trust and kind of take a flyer on. So it's almost like you can't touch it unless you're parlaying them as of right now. So, yeah. I like Arizona to win, but minus 184 is a little bit out of the question here. Uh, total at nine and a half. I'll lean towards the over again. Very similar sort of. Uh, it's, it's very rare, especially in like the first series of the of the year that you have this just total talent discrepancy too. Like usually these teams are working in and that type of thing. But like, no, Arizona is better than Colorado. Dodgers better than St. Louis. 
Same stuff applies in this spot here. Um, but in terms of the total, I actually think this one goes under. Um, in terms of why, I just don't know if St. Louis is trustworthy to kind of uh, stay in these games. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, they don't necessarily have a, the Dodgers don't necessarily have a massive game. I obviously like probably parlaying these two money lines together more than I do either total because I just think that they're better. Um, but yeah, I slightly lean towards the under in this spot, which probably isn't going to be a very popular pick. Last game of the slate, we got Seattle taking on reluctantly my Boston Red Sox here. Uh, so they've split the series so far uh, on the mound for Seattle today is going to be Logan Gilbert going up against Cutter Crawford. Give me Seattle uh, getting kind of juiced here. But like I said, Brian Bale is going to be the pitcher that I trust this year as a Red Sox fan and that as a sports better he's probably the only guy that I can truly back pitching wise if the Red Sox get hot and they show some decent offense sure maybe they could be a team that gets hot like when they went on that absolute tear last year that no one expected I get it but for now um, it's kind of gonna be you know well if they're facing a better pitcher than they're trotting out which 90% of the time they will it's probably a fade the Red Sox type of a spot so give me Seattle here in terms of the total I'll take a peek at the under as well if any if yesterday's game was any indication of what we'd get today that was a one run a uh, one to nothing type of a game um, and no player props that I like in this game either but guys that is going to wrap for today's show hope you guys did enjoy man we're grinding our asses off with the NBA uh, doing the MLB and NBA at the same time I know Tasso's putting out multiple videos a day as well so hope you guys do enjoy if you are not subscribed what are you doing you made it 26 minutes into the video and you're not subbed hit that sub button hit that like button and we'll catch you guys in the next one all right peace out